Future Vision, Smart Speech Hints for People with Sight Loss. Presented by Anthony Horner, Sight Airedale, 22nd of July, 2021. Morning everybody, we are the independent sight societies from down the country, from Yorkshire down to here in South London. We have come together to present some Zoom workshops on Future Vision, um, things going on in the technology world and today we are being presented for our third session by Anthony from Site Airedale which is up in North and West Yorkshire and he's going to teach us some exciting stuff about Alexa we hope and I just hope that not everybody's Alexa is going to go <laughs> off oh there's, there goes mine <laughs> so over to you Anthony oh hey so hello I'm, I'm Anthony Horner uh, and I'm from Site Airedale in Heathrow so what, uh, what am I going to talk about in this session? So in this session, I'm going to talk about uh, smart speakers uh, so, and how they can be useful to people living with sight loss. So we'll be looking at what a, a smart speaker is, how you can use it to get information, how you can, uh, how you can use it to control the different devices in your home, and how you can use them to access entertainment. So what is a smart speaker? Uh, I think first of all, I'll say that if you have a Alexa, you may want to put her on mute, because while I'm going to try and avoid saying that word, uh, it may slip out, so it may be best to mute her. So what is a smart speaker? A smart speaker is basically a speaker that is connected to the internet and has a built-in virtual assistant that responds to voice commands. Uh, it tends to be a Bluetooth speaker so you can connect your phone to it for playing music and that kind of stuff. So these assistants can play music, they can look up information on the internet and they can even control smart devices around the home. And currently there are three main virtual assistants on the market. From Apple, uh, if you have an Apple product, you'll be familiar with Siri. Siri is built into all of the Apple products, so that includes the Mac, the iPhone, the iPad, Apple TV, Apple HomePods and AirPods, and the Apple Watch. If you're an Android user, then you will have access to the Google Assistant and that's built into Android phones and tablets. It's also built into any Android uh, smartwatches. If you have an iPhone, you can access Google Assistant via an app. And if you have... Uh, there's also various smart speakers from Google and other manufacturers which support uh, Google Assistant. And you'll also find it plugged into various different third-party devices, uh, such as TVs and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, so, and then we come on to, I'm going to call her Lady A so she doesn't treat her all the time. Uh, she's the speaker from Amazon, and she's found in the Echo range of smart speakers from Amazon. Uh, she's also found on the Amazon Fire tablet and Amazon's Fire TV product. Amazon don't produce any phones anymore, uh, but uh, you can access her via both Apple and Android phones via an app and she's also in a wide variety of third-party products. So what sort of stuff can... So, so because smart speakers are voice activated this makes them very accessible. And while some products do have screens for viewing photos and feeds 
uh, audio is still the main way of interacting with them. So you can use Lady A to get information. So you can ask her to tell you what the current date and time is. You can ask her to tell you uh, a date at some point in the future. So you can say, what's the date in two weeks time? Uh, you can ask her for world time. So what time is it in Sydney? Uh, you can set reminders and set timers. You can also use her for general knowledge. So what I'll do is I'll let her explain what she can do. How do you spell cucumber? Cucumber is spelled C-U-C-U-M-B-E-R. What is 175 plus 20%? 175 plus 20% is 210. What is 50 kilometers in miles? 50 kilometers is about 31 miles. What is the population of Leeds? In 2019, the population of Leeds was 796,000. So, some of the, one of the powerful things, so, yes, you can use it just to get general knowledge like that, but, which is very useful, but one of the really areas where she's very powerful is the fact that you can use them to control other smart devices around the home. So you may have heard the term smart home. And smart home basically means a home that's equipped with lighting, heating, electronic devices that can be controlled remotely by either a smartphone or a computer. So smart devices can be controlled by a uh, the internet or a smartphone app. Uh, of course, this app has to be accessible. And some of them are, some of them are excellent. Uh, Dyson's got a brilliant app. Uh, some of them are terrible, such as Philips Hue. Uh, and there's hundreds of different products available, uh, ranging from lights, doorbells, washing machines. There's even a smart kettle which will let you know when your, your tea is ready. You can, when you're choosing a smart product, you need to look for something that says works with Alexa or works with Google Assistant or HomeKit, depending on what, what speaker you're using. Many devices these days now require you to interact with them, either via a touch screen or an app. And of course, this makes it, you know, very difficult if you have difficulty seeing that screen. And a lot of devices, it's the only way you can get any information out of them. So, as I said earlier, the app needs to be accessible. One advantage that the smart speakers do is they give you the ability to control the device using your voice or get spoken information on a device's status. <coughs> so the first product I'm going to demonstrate is a Dyson air purifier. And this air purifier can be controlled by a, a remote control or it can be controlled by its, its iPhone app. I think there's also one for Android as well. Uh, the iPhone app is very accessible. It's obvious that Dyson have put a lot of effort into making their, making their app accessible. And on the actual unit itself is a small LED screen which provides information on temperature, air quality and fan speed. So what I'm going to do in this demonstration is I'm going to use Lady A to get air quality and temperature information from my air purifier and then I'm going to ask it to turn on the fan at uh, a specified speed. In this, in this image, in this video, 
the Dyson is the tall uh, device in the centre of the screen and to its left is a Sonos smart speaker which has Alexa built into it. Alexa, ask Dyson what the temperature is. Which machine are you referring to? Say one for bedroom Dyson, two for office Dyson. One. The temperature inside is 28 degrees. Ask Dyson what the air quality is. Which machine are you referring to? Say one for bedroom Dyson, two for office Dyson. One. Your indoor air quality is currently good. Ask Dyson to set fan speed to eight. Which machine are you referring to? Say one for bedroom Dyson, two for office Dyson. One. Your bedroom Dyson purifier is now in manual mode and set to speed eight. So in this next demonstration, I'm going to show how I can use Lady A to control the heating in my home. So we have Hive Central Heating. Uh, Hive is a, a British gas product. Uh, it can be fitted to existing gas boilers. So our particular gas boiler is, is around 15 years old, but we only got Hive put in a few years ago. And the Hive thermostat is not particularly accessible. However, the, the app has quite good accessibility. And you can control your heating using the app or using Lady A. In this demonstration, I'm going to show how I can set... I'm going to ask uh, Alexa what my heating is set at. I'm going to ask her what the current temperature is. I'm going to ask her to boost the heating and then cancel the boost the heating. And of course... I chose the hottest day of the year to demonstrate the central heating system. <laughs> so here we go. It's a little bit quiet, so you'll just have to listen. You might need to turn your volume up slightly. What is my heating set at? The heat's set to 7. What is the temperature of my heating? The heating temperature is 28.5 degrees. Ask Hive to boost my heating. OK. Boosting the heating to 22 degrees for one hour. Ask Hive to stop boost. OK. I cancel boost heating mode. Uh, you'll notice that I kept having to press a button on the thermostat. Uh, what I, all I was doing there was keeping the screen alive as it turns off after a few seconds. But it was actually Alexa that was actually changing the settings. So finally we'll look at lighting. And um, lighting is very important. For, for people with, with sight loss. And one of the benefits of smart lighting is that they allow you to adjust your lighting depending on the situation. So in this room that I'm in now, I have two lighting modes. I have work, which is a daylight light light. Uh, and I use concealed lighting behind the computer monitor and in other areas to try and eliminate shadows. When I want to read and relax, I have a warmer light and I use concealed red accent lighting just to give the room a little bit of warmth and you know just make it feel a little bit more cozy. So in this demonstration I'm using Philips Hue light bulbs. So these are smart bulbs which fit into standard light fittings. Unfortunately though, the, the app that comes with them is very inaccessible. So they're probably not the best product to choose if you're, if, you know, if you're reliant on, on a screen reader. So we'll have a look at them now. Alexa, set lights to work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alexa. Set lights to reading. Okay. 
So one of the powerful things with using these smart devices is the ability to automate uh, these products around the home. And this is what's known as home automation. And with home automation and Alexa, you can set up routines. So a routine allows you to operate one or more devices. And these routines can be treated either manually, so, you know, by using your voice or pressing a button. They can occur on a schedule, so it may be that you want them to happen at a particular day or a particular time, i.e. turn the lights on at sunset. Or it may be that you want them to happen automatically. So, for example, when a door or a window opens, when motion is detected, or when light levels change. So, for example, if, if it's dark outside, close the blinds and turn on the lights. <coughs> Sorry, just needed to cough there. So, what I've done is, I've used Alexa to set up a morning routine. So, what this routine will do is, it says 7am on this screen, but actually, it, I actually did it at half past 11, because that's what time it was when I was filming the demonstration. Uh, I want it to turn on my bedroom light, and it does that using the Philips Hue light bulb. Then I want it to, I want my Sonos speaker to play me a news report on weather and the news comes from BBC News. Then I want it to play the audiobook that I'm currently listening to and that comes from Audible which we'll look at later on. So this next video is a demonstration of how you go about setting up that routine and then you'll be able to see the routine itself running. So I'm now in the Alexa app. So to create a routine, I need to choose more from the menu. More. Tap selected. Then from the more menu, I choose routines. 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 And to add a routine, I tap on the Add routine icon. Add new button. Add new save disabled dimmed button. And I have three options. I have enter routine name, when this happens, and play action. So first of all, we'll give our routine a name, and I'm going to call this wait up. Enter routine name. Please enter a routine W double A next. Next. Save disabled. Dimmed. Button. So now I need to say when, when I want this routine to happen. When this happens it. When this happens smart. So I'm going to choose schedule. 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 Sunrise. Button. And I want it to start at a particular time, so I'm going to choose at time. At time. Set time. Repeat. Heading. Now I only want this to happen on a weekday. So I'm going to deselect the two Saturdays and Sundays. Sunday selected. Sunday not selected. Saturday selected. Saturday not selected. Friday selected. Friday not selected. And the next thing I want to do is I want to choose what time I actually want this routine to take place. So I'm going to tap on select. Add time. Add time. Now I will choose next. Next. But next. So now we need to say what we want to happen. So to do that I'm going to, going to add action. Add action next. Add, add new calendar button. And the first thing I want to do is I want uh, a light to come on. 
So I'm going to select. I'm going Button. to select smart home. Smart, smart home, smart home. And then I'm going to select lights. Lights. Button. Smart home. All hue lights. Radio button. Not checked. And I want bedroom floor lamp. Bedroom floor lamp. Radio button. Not bedroom floor lamp. Radio button. So now I could select as many of these lights as I want. Uh, and they don't all have to be in the same room. So I might, for example, want the bedroom light to come on and the landing light to come on. So now I choose next. So next. Button. Bedroom floor lamp. Next. And I need to say what I want to happen to the light. So in this case, I want it to turn on. So I'm going to select power. Power. And it's already selected on for me as an option. So I'm going to press next. 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 Save. Button. So the next thing I want to happen is I want it to give me a news report. Click on Add Action. Add New. And I'm going to choose... Page 3 of News. Three. news. Button. Confirm. Alexa will play the news from your flash briefing. So now I'll play... Tap on Next. Next. Next save button. And once it's read me the news and weather, I want it to start playing the audiobook that I'm currently listening to. So to do that, I'm going to tap on plus again. Add action. To add button. action. Add new calling button. I'm going to select audible. Audible button. Audible. Example text. My book. Button. So what I can do here is I can either say a book title if I if I want it to play a specific book. Or if I just say my book, it will play the last book I was listening to. So that's what I want. So I'm gonna type in my book. M M what? Now I'm gonna tap on next. Next. But next disabled. Save. Button. I now need to say what device I want this to happen on. So if I tap on choose device. Choose device. But and I want this to play on bedroom 2 echo. Bedroom 2 echo. Button. Cancel. Button. So now I can save this routine. Save. B save routine created successful routines. Add new. Button. So now at half past eleven on the weekday, my bedroom light will turn on. Mm -hmm. And I will get a news and weather report, followed by whatever audiobook I'm currently listening to. Here's your news. Here's your news. <laughs> the government. In weather, in st it's 21 degrees Celsius with partly sunny skies. Getting your selection from Audible. Resuming social warming. Mm -hmm. The fake story that put... So that just gives you a little idea of the sort of routines you can do with, with Alexa. So now let's look at using her for entertainment. So I'm going to look at um, five methods of entertainment. We can look at searching a TV guide, uh, accessing content from the BBC, BBC Radio, listening to music, uh, accessing talking newspapers, internet radio, Halibur libraries, um, and listening to audio and Kindle books. So, 
one of the things that many people have problems with is finding out what's on TV. And there is this hill on Alexa called You Hey TV Guide. And in this demonstration, I'm, I'll show you how I can use her to find out what's on BBC One, to search for a program, and find out what's on next. What's on BBC One? On BBC One, started 20 minutes ago, it is Garden Rescue, Top of the Plots, starts in 10 minutes, it is Escape to the Country, at 3.45pm, it is My Unique B&B, and at 4.30pm, it is Antiques Road Trip. What's on BBC One at 10 o'clock tonight? Tonight on BBC One, at 10pm, it is BBC News at 10. What is on Channel 4 tomorrow at 2pm? Tomorrow on Channel 4, at 2.10pm, it is Countdown, at 3pm, it is A Place in the Sun. What's on next on BBC Two? On BBC Two, at 4.15pm, it is Elephant Family and Me, at 5.15pm, it is Flog It. When is Holby City next on BBC One? The next episode of Holby City is Tuesday on BBC One at 9.20pm. So that's just an example of using the TV guide. There's also the BBC Sounds uh, skill, and that lets you play BBC Radio Live. It lets you catch up on BBC Radio shows and play podcasts from the BBC. It's a free app, uh, so it does say that you need to sign up for a BBC account for the best experience. And to activate it, you need to say Open BBC Sounds. Open BBC Sounds. The BBC. Hello. Which radio station, show, or podcast would you like to hear? Radio 4. You'll need to sign into your BBC account to get the most out of this skill. To make it super easy, there's a prompt on your Alexa app home screen. Playing BBC Radio 4. In those countries, uh, you will need some cash. So, obviously it's a speaker, and one of the main things you want to do with speakers is listen to music. So, on the Alexa, you've got access to Amazon Music Service. Uh, and they, they basically have three options. They have a free service, but that plays adverts. They, if you have Amazon Prime, then you get a wider selection of songs in the free service, and you don't get any adverts. If you have their unlimited uh, service, then you get over 70 million songs and no adverts. And that starts from £4 a month to listen to it on a single device. Uh, but if you want, you know, if you've got more than one of the uh, device and you multiple people in the house want to listen to them at the same time, then you'll have to pay extra for like a family plan. Uh, that's what we've had to do because we've got about, you know, there's three of us in this house and we like listening to different music in different parts of the house. So that's a little bit naughty because you have to end up paying a bit more. So I'll show you a demonstration of listening to music. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask it to play Hotel California. I'm going to ask it to play Songs by Dire Straits. And I'm going to ask it to play the song that goes All the Lonely People. Alexa, play Hotel California. Here's Hotel California 2013 Remaster by Eagles playing on Sonos on Amazon Music. Alexa, play songs by Dire Straits. Shuffling songs by Dire Straits on Amazon Music playing on Sonos. Alexa, play the song that goes 
the lonely people. Here's Eleanor Rigby, remastered 2009 by the Beatles, playing on Sonos on Amazon Music. So that's just and um, how I've got that set up is I've got a, a net hub dot which is the small the smallest speaker. But it doesn't have particularly it's not a particularly quality speaker for listening to music. So I have it set up so that when I ask Alexa to play music, she actually plays it on my Sonos speaker in the office. So now let's have a look at accessing audiobooks. And the first product I'm going to look at is the Real Sam Hub. Real Sam is a product aimed specifically at people with sight loss. It costs $19.99 for the first year and then £99 per year after that. Uh, you can access books from Halibur, uh, Library Rocks, and talks to us. It does say R and I B on their website, but when I actually listened to it, it didn't actually mention R and I B. Uh, and you can also access newspapers, magazines, podcasts, and internet radio stations. Now, before I play the demonstration, uh, I'll give you a disclaimer. I signed up for this yesterday and you have to enter an activation code and it wasn't until late last night that I got that activation code so I literally recorded the demonstration for this it's the first time of me using it and I literally recorded it about 20 minutes before this before this presentation so I'll let you hear what my first experience of this service was. Welcome Anthony to Real Sam. You are now connected to service Alexaprod. We are using your email to save your preferences and the history of your recent operations. You can now ask, for instance, read me a book or use a guide. Read me a book. Listing available book sources. 1. Recently read. 2. Your bookshelf. 3. Calibre Audio Library. 4. LibriVox Audio Library. 5. Torch Trust Audio Library. Say a number or words from the options. Hello, <coughs> Hey now, it's conversation time. You were selecting book. 1. Recently read. 2. Your bookshelf. 3. Calibre Audio Library. 4. LibriVox Audio Library. Yeah, my book. <laughs> Audio Library. Say so number or words from the options. Yeah. 3. Yeah. Congestions getting better. Audio <laughs> library improves the quality like of life for um, people with sight problems or other disabilities who cannot read. So by bringing them the pleasure yeah, of reading like through a free nationwide postal service of recorded books, how do I select a book? Initial five of thousands. One, Meeting the English by Kate Clancy. Two, As Green as Grass by Emma Smith. Three. The Flowers of the Field, by Sarah Harrison. 4. The State We're In, by Adele Parks. Stop. 5. The Complaints, by Ian Rankin. Say a number or words from the options or say next to advance. You can also say, jump forward or backwards a number. You can refine by saying things like, about science. In case you want to add a book to your bookshelf. Say add and its number. Tell me books about history. Sorry, I don't have anything about history. You were selecting book. Initial five of thousands. One. 
Meeting the English. Give me books about science. It sounds like you are trying to search. To find news articles about speeding cars, use the phrase, find articles about speeding cars. Or, to find podcasts about speeding cars, say, find podcasts about speeding cars. Or, to find books about speeding cars, say, find books about speeding cars. Or say, use a guide to learn more. You were selecting book. Initial five of thousands. Find books by Linda LaPlante. Okay. Listing books by Linda LaPlante in the caliber source. First five of 49. One. The Escape by Linda LaPlante. Two. Prime Suspect 1973 by Linda LaPlante. Three. Royal Flush by Linda LaPlante. 4. Cold Shoulder by Linda LaPlante. 5. Sleeping Cruelty by Linda LaPlante. Say a number or words from the options or say next to advance. You can also say jump forward or backwards a number. You can refine by saying things like read by Warren. In case you want to add a book to your bookshelf. Say add and its number. One. You selected the escape. Say, play, or, go back, or, add to my bookshelf. Description, Colin Burrows, recently sent to prison for burglary, knows that his four-year sentence means that he will miss the birth of his first child. His cellmate Barry hatches a plan to get Colin out of jail for the birth. It's a plan so crazy that either it will fail and get both men in deeper trouble, or it might just work. Quick Reads Author, Linda LaPlante Play Reading the Escape Sorry, but you have to log into Calibre to read this book. Please enter your Calibre credentials through the web portal or call customer support. So, that was my first experience with that product. Now we'll look at Audible. Audible is a commercial service which is available from Amazon. Uh, they provide both abridged and unabridged books. You can buy books uh, individually. Or you can have a subscription where you get one audiobook a month for $7.99 or two audiobooks a month for $14.99. And where it's quite clever is, is it can sync between devices. So if you start listening to a book on your iPhone uh, and then you can finish listening to it on your smart speaker and it will remember where you left off so you know it, it's quite it's quite good so in this next demonstration i'm going to show you uh alexa actually playing an audible book and i'll also show you alexa reading a hindle book so because hindle books are, <laughs> are are electronic books in print form uh, so there it uses a, a computerized voice to read so I'll let you hear that now. So with the Amazon Echo, you can listen to audiobooks purchased from Amazon's Audible audiobook library. These titles are read by actors, and may be books or other performances such as stand-up comedy or radio plays. The Echo allows you to navigate between chapters, skip backwards or forwards 30 seconds and set sleep timers. With Kindle books, Kindle books are designed to be read on a device such as a Kindle ebook reader, tablet, smartphone or a computer. The Echo uses computerised text-to-speech to read Kindle books. Some Kindle books do have an audible companion, 
and Alexa will alert you if such a title exists, and this can be purchased separately. The Echo can't read comics or graphic novels, and also you can't actually purchase books via the Amazon Echo. You have to do this either by the Amazon website or the Audible website. So first of all, let's have a look at listening to audiobooks on the Echo. So if I want to play an audiobook, all I need to do is say Alexa, play my audiobook, followed by the book title. And if I want to pause my book at any time, I say Alexa, pause. And that pauses the current book. So now let's see this in action. Alexa, play my audiobook, The Complete Stories of Sherlock Holmes. Getting your book from Audible. Resuming the complete stories of Sherlock Holmes. This is Audible. The complete stories of Sherlock Holmes. Once I pause an audiobook, I can resume listening to it simply by saying, Alexa, resume my audiobook. And that will play the last audiobook that I've listened to. So even if I've listened to an audiobook on my iPhone, it will continue playing that title. Alexa, resume my audiobook. The complete stories of Sherlock Holmes. Alexa, stop. If I wanted to listen to a specific audiobook, then I would say to Alexa, Alexa, resume my audiobook, followed by the book's title. So for example, in this case, I want to listen to a book called Catch Me If You Can by Frank Abagnale. Alexa, resume my audiobook, Catch Me If You Can. Getting your book from Audible. Resuming Catch Me If You Can. Usually be a dozen or more pilots or other crewmen taking a break. Alexa, and invariably... Stop. So now let's look at using the Amazon Echo for listening to Kindle ebooks. So first of all, if I want to listen to a Kindle ebook, all I have to do is say Alexa, play my Kindle book, followed by the title. And if I want to pause, as with audiobooks, I just say Alexa pause. Alexa, play my Kindle book, The Science of Everyday Life. The science of everyday life. White teapot stribble. Toast burns and light bulbs shine by Marty Jobson. Reading from Kindle. Since this color change does not happen in smoked salmon, that must Alexa, mean it is not... Stop. If I want to resume the last book that I was listening to, all I have to do is say, Alexa, resume my Kindle book. Since this colour change does not happen in smoked salmon, that must mean it Alexa, is not cooked. Pause. If I want to resume a specific book, then all I have to do is say, resume my Kindle book, followed by the title. So in this case, I want to resume a book called The Chocolate Egg Murders. So I say, Alexa, resume my Kindle book, The Chocolate Egg Murders. The Chocolate Egg Murders. Number 7, Sanford Third Age Club Mystery, by David W. Robinson, reading from Kindle. With the last chords of the final number still reverberating Alexa, around the... stop. So, hopefully that's given you uh, an idea of the capabilities of smart speakers and these products. So, I'll leave it there, and uh, if anybody has any questions... Okay, th thank you. Thank you, Anthony. It's, it's team here, everyone. Yeah, well, that was a bit comprehensive, wasn't it? So, <laughs> everything from really simple things, uh, like spelling cucumber, setting up routines, conditions, and, and then books. I mean, um, sometimes with Alexa, I find it, it's the journey, not the destination, the, the enjoyment of setting it up to do things. But anyway, <laughs> I mean, that, um, I, I didn't even know it does so many things. I really didn't have a clue. Thanks, Anthony. I really learned a uh, lot. Conditions I didn't know about. Um, that was, yeah. So what do people think then? I mean, um, uh, 
Anybody got any, any questions for Anthony while he's here? I've got a couple, but anybody else got one before me? How expensive is the um, equipment for the hub? For the hub? Because uh, I assume you need certain equipment for Alexa to to work. Yeah, you mean the the home automation stuff? Yeah. Uh, the prices vary. I mean, you can get. Uh, I mean, that Dyson I was demonstrating. Uh, that's a, that's a four hundred pound uh, product. Now, you know, Dyson products are expensive. However, yeah. you if you just got a normal fan. You could buy a fifteen pound smart plug, uh, something like these. I mean, that's that's a smart plug. That plugs into a standard plug socket, and that costs twenty two pounds. And what we use these for? Uh, I have a big group of them here, and we use them for like Christmas tree lights. So, when it's Christmas, we can just say, Alexa, turn on the Christmas lights. And all of these chaps turn on all at once and light everything up. So, it doesn't have to be expensive. You can, you can get smart bulbs, uh, you know, again, under, under £50. I mean, they're more expensive than a normal bulb. Uh, I've, seen, but, I've, I've seen them on... Amazon for fifteen pounds. Yeah. So once they plug in into your light socket, how then do you connect it to Alexa? So they they will come with an app. Right. And you it, just download the app. Oh. Yeah, you download the app, and that will usually have there would usually be a, a sign up routine where you you have to. Sign into your your Amazon account via the smart bulb app right. or the the smart product app. Uh, so, like I said, the best thing to do is, is is to look for products that say work with Alexa. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll, I'll try that. I think uh, you can get into. I, I had an issue with Hive. Um, not my personally. I set up an Alexa for somebody, which was great. Um, the Hive, uh, her boiler was set up by Hive, and, and Hive set up, you know, all, all that activity. Anyway, when it went wrong, which it did, by the way, uh, the boiler, and, um, we, we actually got the blame, and we had did nothing to do with Hive, and the Hive wouldn't come out. So how do you sort those disputes? What's the, um, if something goes wrong, what can go wrong? Could be Alexa, could be the app, and also it could be the device, couldn't it? That, that's the problem. You, you you're adding you're adding extra layers of complexity to something. So it could be Alexa that's gone wrong. It could be your Wi-Fi that's gone wrong. It could be the device it's controlling that's gone wrong. You know, and that that is that is the problem. You know, and that that is that that's that's where it's not quite as simple as you know just getting the thing plugging it in uh, and. You do sort of need to do a little bit of diagnostics and try and work out what's happening. Yes, yes, which is which is fine. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's just a sort of yeah. I mean, because these things are absolutely wonderful. Don't get me wrong, absolutely wonderful. Uh, but there can be, um, yeah, the, the diagnosing what the issue is. Uh, that's something probably the site organisation can actually get involved in, not necessarily resolve it, <laughs> but can say it's this or it's that. So, you know, we, we, we wouldn't mind doing that, by the way, science advice. But what we can't do is fix your boiler. <laughs> <laughs> if your boiler goes wrong, then that's that, well, that what was wrong with this instance, but it wouldn't come out because they thought it was Alexa. So just, you know, those little things to um, the site organisations like ourselves can actually help with the diagnosis, but often we can't help with the cure. Um, so there you go. But like some, some of those um, routines you set up, imagine that. It's like 7 o'clock in the morning and everything kicks off then. In your house? Yeah, I mean, it's it. We have one. Uh, now, I have several home automation systems, and I use I use um, 
I use a uh, Samsung Smart Things, which is a home automation platform, which is a bit more sophisticated than what Alexa does, and that you can set more complicated conditions. But yeah, some of some of the things I have, for example, uh, on a in the morning, if we go into the living room and say breakfast time, she will turn the lights on, tune the radio into tune the Sonos radio into BBC Radio Two. And then, uh, when it's time for me to leave for work, she will actually tell me, time to go. I mean, I hear the story, uh, it might have been somebody on here, somebody has Alexa, uh, she's totally non-sighted, um, totally, and has been from birth, I believe, uh, but she likes her lights to go on the same time as everybody else in the street. So she has Alexa putting the lights on at whatever that time. You know, um, you know, it's I, I, you know, it's not something I've done, but I've heard that story though. Um, yeah. Well, I think that's the thing. It, 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 I mean, it's excellent as well. I mean, if you've got somebody with a disability, uh, it allows them to control things. So if you know, if somebody's had a stroke or something like that, uh, and you've got smart blinds, it can close their own blinds. It can turn the television on. Uh, you can also use Alexa as a as an intercom, so you can say announce, and then you know use it to speak to people in other parts of the house. So it's it, it's quite amazing that what she can do. Uh, in the past, this this sort of stuff has thousands, mm-hmm. and now it's at a level where ordinary people can afford it. You know, uh, and I think that's that's the there's still a lot of it's still not it's still a long way from being perfect, but it's it's making things that bit easier for people. Yeah, but you you showed us some stuff which is actually free, you know. Um, once you bought your Alexa, which you can buy on a good day for twenty pounds, by the way, on a good day, <laughs> um, you showed us some stuff that's um, absolutely free. It's just knowing how to do these things, and I, I learned to quite myself from that uh, i really didn't know you could do some of that stuff uh, on, on the conditions so there you go i knew about the other stuff the routines not the conditions uh, okay anybody got more more questions please Quite or, nothing or, for nothing from me but thank you anthony it was really good thank you yes just just one thing vicky here um <clears throat> i have um i tried i my um getting my mother an A lady for Christmas, mm. and I was trying to join it to her Wi-Fi so I could because I believe you can do a drop-in. Does anybody know anything about that? So it's, but I'm not quite sure how it has to be because I connected her to my account, but I was trying to log, um, try to use her Wi-Fi, obviously because it's in her house, which is somewhere else, and I just couldn't get it to work. And I'm not quite sure what I was doing wrong, whether it needed to be standalone on her Wi-Fi connected to her Amazon account. But then how would I link it? Any ideas? I think you have to link it to her her Amazon account. And I think she has to be at contact in your phone. But it, it's something I have sort of experimented with, but not, not very far. And I've tried doing it in the house to sort of, you know, link the different things up. Uh, and I'm not, not very far with it. So... But it may also be as well that you have to go into the Amazon Alexa app for her device and actually allow drop in. Because I think you've got to you've got to specifically you've got to specifically allow it. Yeah, because she hasn't got a smartphone. I, I did try all that on my own app, I think. Yeah. But I do I do know this works because I was speaking to a client the other day who dropped in and he says he drops in on his children and one lives in Newcastle and he's down here in, in Sutton. So, um, so I know it can work. I'm just, I tried, I tried for ages. I tried every single thing and it, it's just, it's just annoying that I couldn't get it to work really. So. Okay, okay. But we, we've gone, gone past say 11 o'clock. Um, I'm going to wind it up unless somebody's got a really burning question. Um, oh, yes, Sue. Hi, Sue. 
I'd like to say thank you. I learned a lot. And the only question for me is which tablet is the best, an Amazon Fire or a Samsung or which one? Controversial question. <laughs> Personally, I think the iPad is the best tablet, but that's because I'm an Apple person. Um, the downside with the iPad is it costs are quite expensive. Uh, the Amazon Fire tablets are, are cheaper, and there is a there is a screen reader built into them, but I'm not quite as familiar with them from an accessibility point of view as I am with with um, with uh, iPad. Generally, I would tend to point people towards iPad uh, because I, I do know it's very good accessibility. But of course, you've also got to consider, you know, cost and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I would agree with that. Cost, obviously, the, the fire is a remarkable cost. However, it's very easy to get lost in the fire. Um, Whereas the iPad, if you get lost, it's quite easy to get out of trouble. That's my only thing with the fire. The fire is for the price is incredible, fifty, sixty pound. Uh, but, but if you get lost in the fire, you can get lost, <laughs> and it's, uh, because of the swiping you have to do rather than pressing the buttons. That's all I would say about the fire. But if it's just to set something up, um, you know, because you can set this stuff up. You need a smart device to set Alexa up, for example. Um, you, you, you might as well have a fire if that's what you're going to use it for. Um, just setting up your Alexa. Um, but if you're going to use it for other things, uh, yeah, get the iPad or, or you know, synaptic Android. So, yeah, I think I'd agree with the Fire tablet. I mean, I, I did find it quite accessible when I was trying it, but obviously it is specifically Amazon. So, you know, it, it will work probably really well with Audible, Kindle, the A-Lady, you know, and all the things that Anthony's just been talking about. So if that, that's what you want it for, um, I'd say that would be a perfect fit. Yeah, it's not something you'd want to use all day, uh, unlike the iPad, which you can use all day. Uh, but the, the fire for setting up the Amazon, absolutely, wouldn't be a big issue. Uh, because if, if oh, I, when I started setting up Amazons, I was using my own account rather stupidly. There are two people in Cumbria that have access to my Amazon Prime account and Spotify. No, I'm not <laughs> going to say who they are. <laughs> that, that is the danger of, that's why, if we are going to get involved in the setup, the person needs either a family member with a smartphone, or if you, or if you buy, um, we had ten Amazon Fires given to us, for example. We've only got one left now. Um, that that was really good to give to people to start up as well. So um, if it's about startups, so then then you know, then the fire is good for that. But long term, definitely the iPad. I'm with Anthony on that. <laughs> yeah, same here. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Right, everybody, we've um, exceeded as usual. <laughs> and that was remarkable, Anthony. It was really good because there's everything really simple to some really well-explained, complex procedures, which actually are on video. So somebody like myself actually, you know, can use that as a tutorial. Um, you know, next time, I, you know, if somebody ever does ask me to set something up uh, to that degree, I, I, it's, on, it's on video. So, so thank you for that from my side. So, um, what have we got in a month's time? Who is in a month's time? Is it, um, it's Worcestershire, I believe. Um, yeah. I it's Worcestershire. Um, so, so, yeah, so we, we will be back in a month's time. Uh, it'll be advertised. I'm not sure what the content is. Hasn't been agreed yet, but it will be good. <laughs> <laughs> we will send the invite out um, on, on, in due course to everyone once we know what we're doing. Thank you, Anthony. It was really good. Thank you very much. Yeah, excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Have a good rest of the summer. Bye. Bye. See you Bye. soon. Bye. Bye. Future Vision and live well. We hope you enjoyed this presentation. Future Vision events take place on the fourth Thursday of each month at 10 a.m. Live well sessions concentrate on making the most of life with sight loss. These sessions take place on the second Thursday of each month at 10 a.m. To attend the next session or to suggest future topics, please contact your local site society, who will be able to provide you with the Zoom link.